What's going on guys? My name is Mark Wagner and today I'm going to be talking about how I generated over $300,000 in revenue while I was still in high school. So this was a very unique experience for me and while I still have some perspective on what it's like to be a high school entrepreneur, I figured I'd go ahead and make this video and really just talk about what I learned from the experience and how it was. So let's get into the video. <laughs> So um, for those of you that don't know, I made the vast majority of my money through Shopify dropshipping. So over $300,000, the number that I'm talking about in this video, um, that was all generated on one store. And I do have other stores and other businesses that have generated me well in excess of $300,000. So um, Shopify dropshipping was definitely not the first business that I got into. This was a long, long, long process that um, it took a lot of failed attempts before I actually started to see some results. So um, I've really been an entrepreneur since I was about 14 years old. And the first business that I remember starting was um, just growing Instagram accounts. So um, I had three Instagram accounts. I remember one of them was based on like, uh, it was like a lifestyle goals, like luxury lifestyle stuff like that and then I had another one that was like it, it was called coastal ocean vibes and it was um, just posting pictures of like beaches and like oceanside resorts and stuff like that and I know I had another one but can't remember off the top of my head so um, I never really grew those Instagram accounts to over a thousand followers and um, I think the reason why I fell with Instagram and I failed with so many other businesses was just because I couldn't fully invest myself into them. I had no money. I was very, very broke. I mean, I was 14 years old. Um, I obviously could not invest um, too much into these businesses. So um, after I grew Instagram accounts, another business that I remember getting into was stock trading. So I probably watched hundreds and hundreds of hours of um, stock videos on YouTube. I couldn't buy a course, I couldn't do anything like that, but um, I watched YouTube videos and I took notes and I still to this day have pages and pages and pages of um, you know how to trade stocks and stuff like that. And I, I couldn't do it now, but um, I remember that I was really into that and that's what I wanted to do. But um, I think the reason that I quit with that is A, my parents wouldn't let me get like an E-Trade account or whatever you need to trade stocks, I don't remember. And also, I was kind of learning from Timothy Sykes, he's a really popular stock trader on YouTube. But um, I got really discouraged when I found out that he'd been doing this for like 20 plus years and I think that I saw he had only made a couple million dollars. And the rest had just come from like training people and courses and stuff like that which is also what many people see from Shopify dropshipping. So another business that I got into after trading stocks was um, affiliate marketing. So um, I remember I made a couple advertisements for this and um, I, I was really into it, I was learning a lot, but my parents wouldn't let me sign up for an account and I really had no money to pay for advertisements. So if for those of you that don't know what affiliate marketing is, basically you market someone else's product or service and you receive a percentage of the sale. So I was going to use Instagram influencers and I made all these different ads for these different products and services and I prepared like a whole presentation to show my parents on why it's a viable business model and not like a scam or anything like that. Obviously for those of you that um, you know are in high school parents are always going to be skeptical because making money online is such a new thing and it's not something that they're exposed to. So um, it's only natural to be skeptical and I can't really blame them for that, but I really wish that um, either they had let me do this or I had found another way to um, open an account. So after affiliate marketing, I got into Shopify dropshipping. Now this was way before it blew up and became such a big um, thing. So um, in the days that I was dropshipping, there were no like gurus. So I had to learn from like blogs and maybe a couple YouTube videos here and there, but there was really no one that I can remember that just had a soul, like a channel solely dedicated to making informative Shopify dropshipping videos. So 
I was kind of mixing all this information in from other like sources and it really, really, really hurt me. Like my mind was just all over the place. I mean, I was trying to do Facebook ads. I was trying to do POD. I was trying to do all this different stuff. And um, the main store that I had was like, um, it was like a bracelet, men's fashion accessories store. I remember I sold so many different products. Like I was trying, I didn't want to go through AliExpress and AliExpress wasn't really a big thing back then for drop shipping. So I was trying to go through like Etsy suppliers and I was contacting like manufacturers and stuff like that. And I just made it way too difficult on myself. If I actually went into that business informed, then I definitely could be a millionaire right now because right after I left it, it kind of just blew up. I mean, fidget spinners and everything else came out and people just made so much money it's ridiculous because there was really no competition back then and there was no one that was going to see your ad and think it's a drop shipping ad so after filling with drop shipping which took about two to three months um, i ended up getting one sale but obviously i lost hundreds of dollars and um i only had hundreds of dollars so i was broke and um what i did was i did online surveys and i grinded on those for months and I kind of took a little break from starting new businesses and um, just tried to build up my capital again. So eventually I was ready to lose some more money and um, that's about the time that Ty Lopez started coming out with his social media marketing agency advertisements and stuff like that. So um, that whole business model blew up and obviously I had some money saved up but not enough for his like thousand dollar course or whatever it was, uh, which I now have. But um, Basically, I just try to learn from other people on YouTube because like I said, the business model was blowing up. So people were trying to replicate his success. So that was really good for me and I learned a lot from it. Um, one of my biggest mistakes was starting an LLC right off the bat before I had a single client. So um, that was a big chunk of the money that I had. And I wish that I didn't invest like 50, 60% um, before I even knew if it was like possible before I had any money made so um, social media marketing was probably like a three to four month thing for me and um, I did not end up getting any clients in that time frame but um, I, I did have a couple meetings and stuff like that and I really wish that I had learned more about sales because I was learning about like Facebook ads and like social media profiles and stuff like that and I really just didn't focus on how much sales is actually a part of it like I was really 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 uh, focused on the content and not the clients and um, it, that relates a lot to Shopify dropshipping because most people underestimate how much advertising and actually getting customers um, is in like the full scale of the business model and that is just it's 90% of the work because fulfilling orders and doing stuff like that like that is it's so easy compared to actually advertising and getting people to buy your shit. Um, and it's the same way with social media marketing another thing I did wrong with my agency was I focused on restaurants and I know that there's people that do very well in the restaurant niche but for me I live in a very very small town I live outside of Raleigh for those of you that don't know and um, there are very very few restaurants here that have the money to pay an 800 or a thousand dollar retainer every month like I said I met with a couple owners and it was just it was way out of their price range and sometimes that's just a common complaint um, but with a restaurant you know that those people are not making enough money to pay $12,000 a year or something like that in August of 2017 I noticed that Shopify dropshipping was blowing up again not only that but um, I connected with Tanner Planess uh, some of you may know him and he basically said he was into dropshipping he was flexing all these Ferraris on his Instagram and I was like you know what like I gotta get back into that so um, I did end up getting back into Shopify dropshipping and I remember um, I basically I ran a Facebook ad for a dog paw necklace I was trying to do free plus shipping it's a horrible advertisement I probably could not even make it work now but um, anyway that failed 
probably lost 30 40 dollars and i said um like this is just not working like this is not how you do it so i learned a lot and i basically focused like i learned from one or two like gurus because they did exist at this point in time and um i learned a lot about like influencer marketing which was not something that i was doing abundantly with my last dropshipping store so um with this dropshipping store I completely changed it around it was a general store and then I changed it to a niche store and it's a niche that I'm very familiar with and I'm very passionate about um, that store is still in existence to today and it's what did the 300k but um, yeah so I started using Instagram influencers and I actually made money with the first advertisement that I ran on that new store so um, ever since then it's just it's been a very very crazy ride because that the same store the first not the first store but the first successful store i ever started i've been able to scale um from zero to a thousand to ten thousand to a hundred thousand and to now over three hundred thousand dollars and i know that probably by the end of the year if not early next year that store is going to hit a million dollars i'm focusing a lot more on branding now and um whatever that's besides the point but anyway those are all the businesses that i've gotten into before i actually had my first successful business um and it's it's been a long ride and i've learned a lot but one thing i have learned that stands out to me is that you just you have to keep trying for me personally i'm so glad that i started in high school because I really had nothing to lose like I said I lost all my money multiple times um, just again and again and again I would get pushed down and I would get back up because I live in my parents house I mean I'm not gonna get foreclosed I'm not gonna get my non-existent car taken away um, like what's the worst that can happen your bank account goes to zero from you know 200 or whatever it was at like who cares you know you just get back up and you keep starting and if you don't live at your parents house if you're not a teenager then whatever um you know you it's it's harder for sure but um you just you just have to keep trying no one's gonna succeed on their first try one thing that i've learned being a high school entrepreneur is that people don't really understand you if you try to talk to your friends or your family or whoever about your businesses they're gonna say that Making money online is impossible, and it's it's definitely not, but people are just normal, you know? Unless you're lucky enough to be around other entrepreneurs or other like-minded people, then they're probably just gonna shut you down and say that that's impossible, or you can't do it, or whatever. So I've found that it's just so much easier if you just keep to yourself. No one needs to know about what you're going to do, or how much money you're making, or whatever you're doing it for yourself and not others so when you go out there and you try to find some sort of gratification by telling people your accomplishments or your dreams or whatever it's probably not gonna happen that's why i don't post on social media that's why i don't flex anything like uh, i don't wear expensive clothes or anything like that because i'm doing this for my own gratification not for other people's Another thing that I have learned um, being a high school entrepreneur is that you can't let age be a factor. Granted, there are some things like a PayPal or a bank account or Shopify or whatever that you have to be 18 to do. And your parents may not wanna sign on it or whatever, but you cannot let age be a factor because age is just one of those boundaries that you set for yourself. And I know that that's, that's funny because you can't really determine your own age. But what I mean by a boundary you set for yourself is that it's just a mental barrier. And if you really think about how you can jump over that barrier or go around that barrier or go under that barrier, there's ways, like you can do it. And just because it's not easy doesn't mean that it's not possible. You are always going to have obstacles. You are always going to have barriers. But when you look at those as opportunities, then you're gonna have doors open up for you. One of the biggest things that I have learned throughout this experience is that you can't be afraid to be different. This kind of goes along with keeping things on the low, but you're probably just going to be surrounded by a bunch of people that are going to work a nine to five job for 40 years plus and then retire. And 
if you want that then fine that's totally cool but I don't want that and the other entrepreneurs don't want that and you cannot be afraid to separate yourself and go do your own thing and forge your own path and it is not easy but it, it is so satisfying um and when you're below people like I, I know when you're different and you're making a lot of money then it's not hard but when you're just starting out and other people are working jobs and making more money than you this is as a teenager by the way and you're not making any money because you're too focused on your Shopify store then it can be tough I, mean, I know that but if you keep to it and you you stay consistent then soon you're gonna pass the people because you weren't afraid to be different the last thing that I want to leave you with is that you need to find a way to light a fire underneath you once you find that one factor that just pushes you to be greater and pushes you to keep going even when you don't want to then you are just gonna find so much success you have to stay consistent with that motivation and you have to work every single day for it but if you have that fire under you keeping you going then it is going to be possible and not only is it going to be possible but it is going to be accomplished because once you keep going if you have that determination and that motivation and you don't quit then it is impossible for you not to succeed all right guys i really hope you enjoyed this video i know it's a definitely a different style of video than i usually make but if you enjoyed it and if you took some value out of this video or you can relate to any of these circumstances that I'm talking about, then please feel free to let me know in the comments. I'd love to have a discussion with you. On your way out, don't forget to hit that big red subscribe button below and I'll see you in the next one.